This week I'm driving a 2020 BMW M235 Grand Coupe. It's a four-door car that's called a coupe that's in the same class as a rear-wheel drive two-door car, but it's a front-wheel drive based all-wheel drive car based on the X2, which is a small crossover. Um, I don't know why this thing exists, but let's let's talk about it. Let's go for a drive. We'll walk you around the interior, exterior, give you some first impressions. As you can see, a lot of new BMW design language all throughout this M235i. We have massive 19 inch wheels with 235, 35, 19 tires. Definitely gonna wanna get the wheel and tire insurance when you lease this. A reasonably sized trunk. Though this being a Grand Coupe, I would hope that it'd be just a little bit larger. You do have some storage space underneath though, which is nice. And some areas here, seats fold down pretty easily. You have two levers to do that with. I don't think it looks too bad for this front wheel drive platform. It is only available in the United States in all wheel drive. It shares a platform with the X2 and Mini Cooper's big cars. It's a little tight in the back. You do get a little bit of extra headroom with this hump here. Um, it's okay, you could, you could fit some adults back here. It's not horrible, it does feel a little claustrophobic, but um, these, uh, these front seats are pretty cool to look at, especially with this little, almost looks like an archer hole in a, in a castle. Pretty attractive looking interior, very corporate BMW, keeping in line with a lot of the other models on sale today. Door handles feel nice. There's kind of a, a hardness to the action of the door, the closing, the ride, the, you know, you know how Mini Coopers are kind of just hard and, and, and strong in uh, how you use them. This kind of feels similar to that. Under the hood, we have a two liter turbocharged engine. There is a limited slip differential in the front. Lots of work to reduce torque steer, stuff like that. It's pretty quick. Decent sounding exhaust. I like the look of these seats, though I will say after driving some a little bit in them this week, they're not terribly comfortable. They're pretty hard. The Germans do like their hard seats. They claim that they're better for you though. They aren't as comfortable. A lot of hard surfaces throughout this. Uh, there's pretty much no soft area to, to rest. Even the center console is pretty stiff and firm. A little bit of storage space in there with a USB-C port. And you got a USB type A there. Nice little throaty burbles on startup, even in comfort mode. Sounds kind of similar to the Mini Coopers. You can hear there in sport mode. Gives you a little bit more of a throaty note. Sounds pretty good for a Turbo 4, honestly. And you can control how this engine sounds or how the noise is piped in. You can either do it based on drive mode or go into the menu and change it manually and set it to your your preference. So here's sport mode. Get a kind of a little bit more of a hollow piped in noise from the speakers. Three driving modes, sport, comfort, eco, pro. Um, about what you'd expect from each one. We'll get into the way this thing drives a little bit later. But on the interior, you have some pretty nice materials. Again, keeping in line with the rest of BMW's lineup, I do kind of like this accent here. Uh, climate controls, everything is pretty easy to use. Cruise controls, nice and handy here. No radar guided system in this car or lane keep. Uh, there is lane keep assist, but no lane, uh, lane centering. Heated steering wheel buttons front and center, that's nice. Paddle shifters feel nice and high quality. Um, can I get this weird gear shifter, though you do get used to it after a little while. 
first camera is nice and high res, though it is kind of small on the screen. You have to press the button to park. I do wish manufacturers would just go back to standard traditional shifters. I know this kind of saves some space and packaging, um, but they are a little bit irritating to use sometimes. You get a lot of information. The infotainment, the iDrive system in this is actually pretty good. Um, everything's organized quite well. There are a lot of settings where you can customize your car. Um, it's pretty easy to navigate with this system. Just don't spill your drink here, otherwise uh, it'll break and feel really cheap. Lots of different settings for your heads-up display, your trip data. A lot of customization in this M235i. But we could talk all about this car and sit here and not go anywhere, but let's take this thing for a drive and see what it's like on the road. You have a chunky BMW steering wheel. Very nice leather, feels pretty good, feels pretty standard compared to everything else. We also supposedly have Apple CarPlay in this, though I will say I've never been able to get it to work in any BMW. I tried pairing my phone with Bluetooth, everything's connected, it should work but after about 15 minutes I gave up with uh, failed pairing attempts. Cool little pops and noises between shifts there from this 8-speed automatic. Brake pedal feels great, nice and firm, good amount of bite, easy to modulate. However, what isn't easy to modulate is the throttle. I think because this is a small two liter with 300 horsepower, the turbocharger comes on so strong that after about 30% of throttle, the throttle pedal is a, it's an on off switch. So it's pretty good putzing around town. It's smooth, but once you try to pass someone or get a little bit more acceleration out of the car, you get all the boost and there's no way to modulate how much acceleration you're getting and uh, all your passengers heads hit the back of their seat and uh, you know there's swearing and cussing and, and people get upset um, so you have to be careful when you drive your m235i um, maybe shifting into manual mode is the best way to go but the throttle programming in this is not great and that's probably a small engine big turbo type of thing Visibility in this is pretty good. Ride quality. Well, we'll hit a bumpy road up here, but as you would expect with these tiny little 35 section tires, you cringe over just about every pothole. You get a decent amount of steering feel. Uh, response is pretty good. Around some corners, this, this does handle very well. But, the ride is a little bit harsh, and uh, you get quite a bit of transmission into the cabin over bumps from the tires, and there's quite a bit of tire noise as well. Let's throw it into sport mode here turn traction off we'll do a little bit of a launch this car is quick mid four seconds to 60 miles an hour chirping the front tires there between shifts I don't know who thought it was a good idea to bang people's heads on the headrest between shifts but that's definitely what this uh, 235i does in sport mode and we'll put it back in here, use the paddles. Pretty neutral, really nice adjustable front end. Very quick shifts when you're hammering it from this 8-speed automatic. You can see here when you're in sport mode you also get a sporty display on your heads up that with comfort and kind of see where your revs are at. This thing 
could probably be a pretty good canyon carver. It does have the harshness and the immediacy and uh, the lack of a refinement of an M car. So it does have that M badge on it and it definitely feels it. It's stiff, it's harsh, it's a little bit noisy. I will say this does feel a little bit more refined than the BMW X2. Uh, I was never really too impressed with the X2. It felt kind of cheap inside and rattly, and this feels a little bit better buttoned together. The engine stop-start system is a little bit slow to come on sometimes, and there is quite a bit of turbo lag. By the time you put your foot down and the engine comes on power, there's a good second or so that you have to wait. It's probably a combination, feels like a combination between turbo lag and uh, throttle delay. BMW does give you this cool speed limiter, which is neat. You can kind of set your the max speed that you want to go, and you can be wide open throttle, and the car will just kind of coast to that speed. Basically, it'll just keep you from speeding, which is a nice feature. Jaguar introduced it. Jaguar Land Rover had it a few years ago, and it's nice to see other companies adopting that. And cruise control on this car is just standard cruise control. Uh, no radar guided system, nothing special there. It, uh, it works about how you'd expect it to. How would I sum this car up? Well, to me, this feels like a car that is designed for people who want something sporty. Uh, they don't really know that, you know, BMW can make cars that are both refined and sporty. I think I would rather just get a 3 Series, spend a couple extra thousand dollars, increase my lease payment a few dollars here and there per month. Um, the new 3 Series is great. If you don't get run, the run-flat tires, um, it's more spacious, looks better, I think. Uh, you can still get all-wheel drive. So, and also that kind of goes into saying that this whole class, you know, with the this being the competitor to the Mercedes A-Class and the Audi A3, um, I'm not too con convinced on any of the cars in this class. It's kind of a strange uh, area where, yeah, it's entry level. It's trying to get younger, you know, new buyers into the brands, but. As a result, these cars, I don't know if they would make me want to buy another car from BMW or Mercedes or Audi. They're a little bit tight, they're a little small, uh, and there are some better offerings as far as a value proposition goes in the market. But you don't necessarily buy a Mercedes and Audi or BMW for value, you buy it for the brand, for the badge. And uh, in that respect, this M235i definitely delivers. You get all the BMW bits, um, you get some cool ambient lighting, as you guys can see here on the sides. That's actually very neat and kind of a highlight for me on this car. But we will also do a POV night drive that kind of showcases some more of that. So for me, that pretty much sums up the M235i. I, uh, when this car first came out, there was kind of a collective groan from the automotive enthusiast community. Oh, they're discontinuing the rear-wheel drive 2 Series. They're not. This is existing with the rear-wheel drive 2 Series, which is good. I'm glad to report that. Um, but it's kind of confusing how they've named it and how they've branded this, this car. So, I don't know. I don't think this is for enthusiasts. This is for people who want to get into a BMW at a reasonable price. And I think probably 
the uh, the 328i X drive is the way to go if you want a Grand Coupe 2 Series. Uh, this this M235 is a little bit eh, it's a little bit too touchy. It's it's not that refined, and for fifty one thousand dollars, which is what this cost this test car costs with the premium package, uh, that's a lot of money. You could get a pretty nice three series for that. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think about this. Um, if you guys have any questions, we'll also be doing some more videos on this M235 on Winding Roads YouTube channel. And I will also do a sound test and a POV night drive with more footage of the ambient lighting later this week. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you guys need anything else. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. Oh yeah, you even get the BMW logo down under the mirrors.